Oh, hello. Well, this is not the time to watch a movie, but it is the time to talk about films and movies. We're going to be talking about different genres of films, how you recommend a film, all the vocabulary you need to talk confidently on this topic. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Hello, this is Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy and here on the YouTube channel also English Speaking Success. Lovely to see you here. How are you? Today we've got this exciting topic of talking fluently about movies and maybe how to eat popcorn as well. It's a great and interesting topic. Um, quite a few of you have already told me about some of the movies that you've liked and that you've watched recently. Today, we're going to look at how we describe movies and we talk about different aspects of them. It's a common topic in IELTS speaking and one that can really help you out. So that's what we've got today. Um, a very quick hello. Let's see who is in the house. Hello to Monica from Rome. Nice to see you. Charles from Nigeria. Good to see you. Cass Hermoso. Hello, everybody. We've also got 2E from Thailand. Nice to see you here as well. Mohammed Toyob, hope to be exciting. Me too, I hope so. And Kate Pastbina, good to see you here. Lots of people from all over the world. Lovely. So listen, let me um, go through today what we're going to do. Before we do, I just wanted to share with you, I got a lovely email the other day from a student who has finished the course that he did with me. It's, he's a student called Hero. <laughs> he is a hero. And he says, hello, Keith. I hope you find, I hope this email finds you well. That's a nice expression. I hope this email finds you well. I'm delighted to announce that I came out of my IELTS test with flying colours. Hero, brilliant English. Flying colours, of course, means he did very well. Your speaking course is wonderful. I only benefited from you for my speaking test without any other courses. Proudly, I achieved a band seven on my speaking. I was able to speak fluently and confidently during the test without any problem or fear of making mistakes. Wow, it's impressive, Hero. And I was very happy to hear what you said at the end. My dream is coming true. I have been offered a place to study for my master's degree in law in Belfast. Oh, fantastic. So listen, stories like that make me very, very happy because it feels like, wow, I'm helping people achieve their goals and their dreams. So Hero, all the best in Belfast. I hope it goes extremely well for you. So today, what are we going to do? Let's have a run through the schedule for today's live lesson which will be about an hour and a half, more or less. If you need to go to the toilet, don't ask, just go. <laughs> okay, we're looking at movies and films. Ta-ta! Great. We're going to have a look. Um, well, first of all, probably, we'll be looking at film genres. Now, I know Disney is not a genre. It's a streaming service. But there are lots of different types of films, right? And we'll talk about them. Genre? just means type. Um, what else? We'll be looking at, of course, some vocabulary on this topic. Um, oh, I'll be mentioning my new online course. So I wanted to mention this briefly at the beginning. I'll tell you more in the middle of the lesson. It's a, a new course. It's the old IELTS Interact course, changed a little bit. It's based on IELTS speaking success. Get a band 7 plus gold, even better. I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. I'll talk about today how to recommend a film as a SpongeBob lets us know. I'll give you the language. He gives you the thumb. I'll give you the language. And we'll be talking about idioms. I wonder what idiom this could be 
when talking about films. That's unusual, right? Let's see, we'll find out shortly. Idiom, so all of that is what we have in store for today's lesson. Great. Now, I have a very quick um, announcement to make, which is this one, um, live lessons. So live lessons from now on, starting April, I'm going to do once a month. The first Thursday, the first Thursday of each month, usual time, 10 a.m. Spain time. Now, once a month because I want to work on some new projects and I need time and I've been putting off these projects and I've decided that I've got so many live lessons on YouTube and so many videos. There's so much for you there for free that I'm just going to do one live lesson a month and do some new projects. New projects. I wasn't sure about telling you this, but one of my new projects, gosh, if I tell you, huh, I have to do it. So let me tell you, I'm going to start a Spanish YouTube channel teaching Spanish. Spanish with Keith, something like that. So I want to do a new channel helping you or other students learn beginner Spanish. Amazing. So that's a new project. It takes a lot of time and I've been putting it off. So I've decided, right, live lessons once a month, Spanish YouTube channel. If you want to learn with me, I'll let you know when that's up and running. <laughs> so there we go. Any surprises? Yes, there's a surprise. Oh my God. Cass says, wow, wow. Du says, well, I like that. Not only learn English with me, learn some Spanish as well. Thank you very much. That's incredible. Congrats. Nice. Yeah, it takes time. So that will be starting in April. So I'll still do the live lessons for IELTS first Thursday of each month, right? So just to let you know. Great. What other things have we got? Any other housekeeping? <laughs> I'm sure there's other housekeeping. Well, um, very basically, if you're on YouTube, do remember, subscribe, turn on the notification button so you can find out about new upcoming videos. And if you're on Facebook, do come and check out the Facebook page. It's at Keith Speaking Academy. Um, there is a group you can join. It's called the Keith Mastermind for IELTS Speaking. Okay. And if you don't know the website, right, I do have a website called Keith Speaking Academy. So you can go and check out the Keith Speaking Academy um, at this address here. There's lots of stuff for you. Um, you can get all the free live lessons and download the PDFs. You can find out about the test format, pop topics, different parts, and there's some great articles. And if you want to study with me and follow a course, you can follow my new course. If you want to find out about the new course, just go to the website, press study with me, and that will take you and give you more information about the IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7 Plus Gold. It's the premium version of the course. So um, you can go and check that out there on the website. Lovely. OK. Now. That's it. Good. It's called. I mean, most of you know, right, that I have IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7 Plus course. Um, it's a very popular course. It's the basic course that I have. But what I've done now is I've actually made a premium version with lots of extra stuff. It's the gold version. So it has everything the same as the original, but it has more. And I'm going to tell you later more about that. But for now, let's get going with our class all about movies. Lovely. Now then, movies. If I can find my notes. <laughs> yes, let's find your notes, Keith. Come on. While I'm doing that, Jintu says, how are you? Love from India. Love from Santander. I live in Spain, although I'm from Manchester in England. I do live in Spain, right? Daniela says, I'll follow your Spanish course. Daniela, your name sounds like you are Spanish. <laughs> really? Maybe. 
Monica says, wow, Spanish. I know. Interesting. Mm. Spanish life course would be great. Looking forward. Okay. Keep watching. Keep watching. Mm. Ming says, I start thinking about learning Spanish because of you. Well, you'll be very welcome. Start with the YouTube channel, right? Excellent. Now, people from all around the world, right? I can see lots of people um, from different countries. I wonder where you are, right? I wonder which country you're in. So listen, guys, have a look here. Da, 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 da. If you... Tell me which country you're in in the chat box, right? Just write in the co in the just write in the chat box which country you are in, and I'm going to connect you to this map, and I'm going to I want to find out where you're all from. This is by some guys called Stream Alive, right? So you can um, we can see here. People from Sri Lanka, Turkey, Iran. And look, in the map, I can see actually where most of you are from. I've got 12 from, that looks like Iran. Three from Kazakhstan or maybe Uzbekistan. I've got a few from here. This is interesting. This is where you are in the world. Let's have a closer look. Where is this? We've got people in Whoops. Hello. Whoops. Interesting. Something's happened to our map. Oh, I, I zoomed into your house. Sorry. <laughs> Someone was in the Millennium Tower. I went a bit too close. Abuja. Wow. Fantastic. Close to Nigeria. So, wow, I can zoom in. Uh, this is a really interesting. I'm just going to play around with this, right? Because here, got people, I think, from Egypt. Can we zoom into Egypt? Cairo, some from the West Bank, some from Lebanon, some from Iran over here, moving across from Tehran as well. And then I imagine quite a few in India. Yes, New Delhi. We've got quite a lot of you joining from New Delhi. Very interesting. Claudia from Italy. And I'm guessing as well, Thailand has got quite a few. Brilliant. And probably Viet oh yeah, Vietnam. I have a lot of students from Vietnam. I don't know if you're all in Hanoi, but quite a few. From Burma as well. It's really interesting. I'm sorry, this is me indulging in looking at... Wow. <laughs> where you are in the world. I've got people from America, surely not learning English. No, I know you're maybe f not from America, but you're living there. Right. Very, very interesting. India, guys, it seems like you are the biggest, not the biggest, Vietnam. That is 54 people from Vietnam. Very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, I was interested to see that um, just to show you. <laughs> Look, there's me where you are in the world. Very, very nice. Hmm. I hadn't realized we had so many people from so many different countries, right? Very interesting. Keep letting me know in the chat box and that will come up. Thanks from the guys from Stream Alive, right, who are facilitating that software. Very interesting. But more interesting, maybe, is talking about movies. So let's get straight into it. Let's have a look at Speaking about different genres. So we're going to talk about movies. Now, I say movies. Um, really, that's a an Americanism. It's more American English. In England um, and Great Britain, United Kingdom, we tend to say film or a film, maybe if you're from Ireland. So we talk about films more. Nowadays, most people use both, right? You can say to go to the movies in Britain, we'd say to go to the cinema, um, but you can watch movies, you can watch films. I mean, both of those are OK, just to be clear. Now, when talking about a film, we often use the noun, right, in the plural. So we say, I like comedies, which are funny films, right? 
So you may describe a com comedy as funny or hilarious, right? Humorous, with the British spelling, humorous, funny. So we talk about the noun. I like comedies. I like thrillers. Again, it's the noun. A thriller in the plural. I like thrillers, which will be maybe exciting, full of suspense. If you want some adjectives there, full of suspense. You don't know what's coming next. Dramas. Again, not quite a thriller, not as exciting. It's more everyday life, but the drama of life, right? Period dramas are dramas set in the past. If you've watched Pride and Prejudice, for example, by Jane Eyre, not the film, she didn't make the film, no, she wrote the book, but they made a film based on her book. Um, it's set in the... Ooh, 18th century, 19th century, and it's set in the past. So it's a period drama, a bit like Bridgerton or Downtown Abbey, if you're into those Brit, British um, drama pieces. You've got mysteries, a bit like the Agatha Christie, um, Hercule Poirot, the mysteries, um, again, exciting, um, intriguing, you could talk about them full of intrigue. Intrigue means curious, right? You're not sure what's going to happen. Intriguing, maybe exciting. Um, romances, again, people falling in love. Um, those, those can be quite, can be what? Romances can be endearing, right? Endearing, full of emotion. They can be sloppy. <laughs> sloppy just means they're too soft. They're too romantic, right? That just means too romantic, too soft and romantic. Oh, it's such a soppy, sloppy, soppy film. Sloppy or soppy? Soppy. <laughs> Not sloppy, soppy. Um, Rom-coms is another one. Rom-com is a romantic comedy, right? Romantic comedy. These are quite popular nowadays. So rom-coms. So basically we've got the noun in the plural, right? I'll just make that really, really clear for you. And these are different genres or types of film. So remember, genre is just a, a, a type of film. Sonia, great comment, right? Could it be cheesy? Yeah, a romance or could be cheesy. Yep, I think cheesy is a nice word. Um, or cliche, sometimes we say it's a bit cliche. So it's too too predictable sometimes, right? Cheesy, corny, too romantic, like soppy. Yeah, that's the word. Rosario says, I'm fond of period dramas. Right, now, interesting, Sandeep, you talk about horror movies. So let's move on because um, we can talk about the noun, but of course we can also use the adjective, right? We can use adjectives and of course the adjective must be followed by film or movie. I like romantic films. Romantic is the adjective. I love horror films. Horror is here, is the adjective. Now horror can be a noun, right? But here it's the adjective. It's a horror film or as Sandeep says, a horror movie. So we can also use adjectives. Other adjectives, sci-fi, sci-fi films, which basically is science fiction, adventure. So notice there's no S, right? Because adjectives in English don't have the S. They don't agree. Historical films, talking about history, fantasy, talking about fairies, crime movies, talking about crime, right? So different kinds, so we can use nouns or adjectives to describe different genres, basically. Okay, excellent, good. Um, let's have a look. Now, Domenico says, I'm a big fan of thrillers and mysteries because they are full of suspense intriguing and on top of that they keep me on the edge of my seat. Domenico, brilliant, 
absolutely brilliant. I love it. I love the language you're using and you're picking up language, practicing good idiom at the end as well. And I like your cats <laughs> to boot. So Domenico says, I'm a big fan of, right? Um, other ways we can say this is, are, right? I like, I'm fond of, I'm really into. Let's add Domenico's. I'm a big fan of. I'm fond of. I'm really into, I'm partial to, I'm a diehard fan of, right? So with the pronunciation, just notice the of becomes of, right? Repeat with me. I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of thrillers. Great. I'm a big fan of, I'm fond of, right? Um, I'm fond of, comedies good i'm really into what am i really into um i'm really into action movies <clears throat> i'm really into action movies notice that stress right i'm really into action movies repeat with me i'm really into action movies and what's true for you i'm partial to action movies partial partial to i'm partial to action movies not bad again the stress is on the action movie or the name right i'm partial to comedies just means i quite like i quite like we always say quite in britain i quite like it's quite good yeah, it's quite interesting. <laughs> I'm quite partial to. Um, I'm partial to, or I'm a big fan, a really big fan. I'm a diehard fan of. What am I a diehard fan of? Um, oh, I don't know. Let me think. I'm a diehard fan of In the Line of Duty. It's a British series. It's not a film, but... So there we've got different expressions, right? You can use as you're practicing. Counter Road says, I'm a diehard fan of period dramas. Lovely, nice. Sophia says, I'm, oh, hang on, Sophia, come back. You moved just as I was pulling you in. I'm keen on, nice, I'm keen on action movies. Great. Hanwell says, I always raring to go to historical movies. I'm big on, I love historical plots. That's nice. That's good. I'm just going to help you a little bit. It's I am always raring to go to historical to watch. I would just add that, right? I am always raring to go. Raring to go means ready, really ready to go and watch historical movies. I'm big on, yeah. So I am big on, yep. Yeah, I am keen on. All of these are fantastic ways of saying the same thing, basically. Let me just tidy up a little bit. Big on, big on, keen on, keen on. You can connect, right? Big on, keen on. Very, very nice. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, who else have we got? Vera Lon says, I'm fond of watching documentaries which are thought provoking. Give me food for thought. I love that. Very, very nice. I love it. And I like your avatar. <laughs> Fadia says, I'm really into soppy movies. Good for you. Take your handkerchiefs with you. <laughs> this is nice far 38 i'm a diehard fan of christopher nolan's movies yeah he's good right he's very very good <laughs> ruya says i'm a diehard fan of you mr keith <laughs> very nice comic movies yes you can say comedies or comic movies yes you can also say that uh 
Good. Any others? Quite a few, but listen, let's move on. That is really, really good. I'm going to share with you this film, right? If you want to find out more about different types of films, um, there's a link here. I'll ask the moderators, um, Mehdi, Upsara, and Paula, if you can just share the link in the groups and you'll find, let me just show you over here. This is a really nice website. Um, I really like it, right? Premium Beat. And basically that link will show you the guide to the basic film genres. This is a, a guide for people making films, but the language you can learn here is great, right? It explains what are film genres, um, the basic film genres. So you've got your action, comedy, drama, right? We've looked at these um, here with the noun, here with the adjective, right? As we discussed, but then it takes each one and it gives you not only examples, but more specific. So you may have war action or spy and espionage action or martial arts action, right? And there's a whole range of, <laughs> of language, comedy. You can talk about slapstick, screwball, parody, black comedy. Absolutely amazing. I just think this is such an interesting, ooh, for those of you who like horror, such an interesting website. Lots of great um, vocabulary if you want to explore further the different genres of films. It's really nice. Go and check it out. The guys have linked to it. Of course, do remember that the, the notes from today's class, later you'll be able to download from the website. That is the Keith Speaking Academy. You'll be able to go in, download them from the live lesson page um, and get the notes from today. So good. <laughs> Got it. Oh, this is nice. Princess. Shell says, I rarely watch movies. I'm always into your educational videos. Good for you. Stay focused. Keep learning. Nice. Excellent. Nice. Thanks for sharing. So we've looked at different genres, right? We've been having a look basically at um, movies. Come on. Here we are. That's what I'm trying to get. We've been looking at movies. Um, we have looked at different genres. What's next? vocabulary. So we're looking at a wider range of vocabulary. Let's get straight in and have a look over here. Oh, favourite kind of movie. Oh, I am interested actually. What is your favourite kind of movie? Guys, again, um, yes, put your answer in the um, chat box. Just tell me the favourite kind of movie. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will actually give you some options up here. Let me show you. What's your favourite kind of movie? Remember, if you're putting the noun, put it in the plural. So choose one of these, your favourite kind of movie. <laughs> you may be choosing lots of others. Horror, thrillers. It's not connecting, is it? Interesting. I wonder why. Oh, now they're connecting. Now they're connecting. Can't see number one, unfortunately. Number one is comedies. Wow, look at that. Thrillers. Thriller. Do you remember Michael Jackson? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Look at that. That is definitely the most popular. Dramas and romantic movies seem to be coming up um, in second place. Thrillers has disappeared again. <laughs> I don't know why. Adventure movies also seem to be very popular. And it seems that nobody's into comedies, but I've seen a few people say comedies. 
So stream alive. Okay, fantastic. Ah, I think the software takes time to catch up. Comedies is actually quite popular as well, but thrillers, without a doubt, thrillers are up there leading the pack. Very, very interesting. Like, I like it. Very, very nice. Love. I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes later. We can have a look at what the most popular one was, but I think it's clear. Thrillers. People like excitement, intrigue, suspense in their lives, right? <laughs> Lovely. Let us move on from your favourite kind of movie to... <coughs> to what? To this. So I've got a quick tip. Um, IELTS speaking tip, right? One of the really important things in IELTS, if you want a band seven, is to learn to paraphrase. Now, what do I mean by paraphrase? It's when you're trying to say something but you can't find the right word or you can't remember the right word. But instead of just stopping, you find a way to say it in a different way. So instead of stopping, you go round and explain in a different way. So this is essential. To get a band seven or above, you must be able to paraphrase. Um, now, this will come up when you talk about books and films, because Often the translation of films is different, right? And many people remember the name of the film in their own language, but not in English. And they go, oh, I want to tell you about a film. It's called... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, in English? Don't know. Oh, and then everything breaks. What you must do is find a way round to explain it and say something like, well... In Vietnamese, it's called do 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 do. I'm not sure of the English translation, but let me tell you about this film. Right? You carry on fluently without stopping and breaking, but just explaining it. This is called paraphrasing. It's really important. Um, so, describing the name of a film, it's important to be able to paraphrase, that is, to say something in a different way in IELTS. So don't worry if you don't know the name of a film in English or you can't remember the actor's name. Just find a way to explain your idea, right? Some phrases you can use, for example, I don't know the name in English, but it's a film about ba 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 ba, right? If my memory serves me right, it's called, and then you could say, if you remember the name, right? I think in English, it's called da da da, or something like that, right? So don't worry if it's not the perfect name, because the examiner doesn't care about the name of the film, really, or whether they know the film. doesn't matter. They just want to know you can express yourself in English. So, if my memory serves me right, I think in English it's called da -da 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 -da, or something like that. Or if I remember correctly, I think in, in English it's called da -da 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 -da. So these are nice expressions, right? If I remember correctly, if my memory serves me right. So you're taking a problem and make it, making it into an opportunity. I can't quite, quite, again, British people and quite, we say quite all the time, quite good, can't quite remember. I don't quite know. <laughs> I can't quite remember. Why do we say quite all the time? I can't quite remember the actor's name, but he was great. Or, it's on the tip of my tongue. Great expression. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, do you know that situation, right, where you're trying to remember something 
and the name is like, oh, yes, it's it's here, but it, it doesn't come out. We say it's on the tip of your tongue that you can't quite say it quite, quite. You can't quite say it. It's on the tip of my tongue, right? I almost know, but it's stuck in my head. <laughs> Great. So that's it. Some nice expressions for you there. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't quite remember. Great. Good. Irene is practicing. Good to see it, Irene. Well done. Um, Maheshi, nice, as far as I can remember, is another expression. Good. Hannah, can I just translate the title? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Yes. Um so you could say, for example, I don't know the name in English, but in, let's say, if I'm Spanish, for example, but in Spanish, it is da 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 da. Yeah, absolutely fine. But then carry on in English. Don't carry on in Spanish. <laughs> Good. Another one. Yeah, Amir Hossein. Great. If I'm not mistaken, yes. And a very similar idea. Unless I'm mistaken, the movie is called. That's nice as well. So a very similar thing. If I'm not mistaken. If I am not mistaken, it's called. Da, 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 da. OK, great. These are all great expressions or paraphrasing, right? This is how you paraphrase in this context. <laughs> Azilbeck. Azilbeck, I wouldn't say that. That doesn't make much sense. <laughs> Great. Aftal, if I could recall vividly. It's not a common expression. Um, it sounds too much. I wouldn't say that. I think it's too much. Yeah. Sophia, it's on the tip of my tongue. Great. As far as I know, keep it simple, as Tanzia says. Yeah, as far as I know. Great. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, lovely. Some, some good examples all about paraphrasing. So remember, don't break down, stop, don't. Just keep going fluently and paraphrase. Excellent. Good. I think it's time for me to have a little something. Badab she be do be do be do be bum bum bum. I deliberate. I think in the mornings before the lesson, shall I have hot water or shall I have coffee? And at the start of the lesson, coffee is like a great idea. But after half an hour, cold coffee, oh, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Terrible idea. Never mind. We will keep going. So talking about movies, let's carry on because we've got some really, really interesting vocabulary coming up to talk about movies. Different aspects. We're going to talk about the setting, the character, the plot, what's happening, the music, everything, right? So let's look first of all, if you want to talk about the setting, the setting, if you like, is the, the time and place where it takes place, where it happens, right? Um, so you could say it's set in means it takes place in, it's set in space. So that just means it takes place in, right? It takes place in da, 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 space. OK. Or so in a place or a time, it's set in the 15th century uh, or it's set during the First World War or it's set after the Second World War. It's set before uh, the birth of Christ. So you can play with it in different ways, but it's set in very simple way to talk about when the film or where the film happens. OK, easy. Then we've got the main character. 
talking about the characters okay so the main character we talk about the main actor or actress no the character right the main character is a boy who was bit by a spider <laughs> what's the film ba -ba -ba -ba. so the main character is ja, 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 ja. then you describe it right we can talk about the protagonist so the protagonist is the hero of the story For example, in Spider-Man, the protagonist is a young boy who was bit by a spider and gets supernatural, supernatural, yeah, kind of supernatural spider powers. Now, the opposite, if you like, is the antagonist um, hero. The antagonist is the villain or the baddie, right? The bad the bad person. Now, of course, I always find it very interesting when we talk about protagonist and antagonist, like good and evil. Have you noticed how Hollywood and many films make life so simple, make life black and white, good and evil, protagonist, antagonist? Of course, real life, it's not like that. Things aren't black and white. Things aren't so simple. Actually, characters are more complex. Sometimes the protagonist has a dark side. Sometimes the antagonist can have a good side, depending on the day. <laughs> if he has cold coffee, maybe he becomes a baddie during the film. But in films, I think sometimes the directors treat the audience like they're a bit stupid or simple. So they make everything black and white so you can follow, so we can follow. So anyway, we've got the protagonist. Not easy to say. Protagonist. 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 Antagonist. Antagonist. Great. Villain is another word, right? The villain as well. Great. Okay. Good. Good. I'm just seeing anything else coming in. Right. Irene, this is interesting. You're practicing the main character. Now, this is really good, Irene, because it's an opportunity for all of us to learn some useful expressions. Instead of make me strong impression, we would say the main character made a strong impression on me with her acting. The main character made a strong impression on, excuse me, come back, Keith, on me with her acting. That's great, Irene. Thank you very much, because now everybody, all 700 people, can learn the correct way to say make an impression make a good impression on me right on me goes at the end nice very very nice <laughs> good counter road i think this simplification of characters happens only in popcorn movies yes that's right yeah i watch too much netflix netflix is full of popcorn movies <laughs> Um, can what if a hero is protagonist the heroine as well so excuse me I didn't mean just the men it can be the female as well so the protagonist even if it's a woman then it's the protagonist so the Captain America the protagonist is the woman who saves the world right she's the heroine but it's also protagonist the same with antagonist it's gender neutral if you like great in movies i like antagonists like the joker yeah the joker great example of an antagonist right exactly lily asks oh make a good impression on people with her acting great ruya nice good practice lily is asking when we talk about details of the film should we use present or past right lily 
you can use both or either. By and large, I would suggest you use the past tense, right? But if your control of English is good, like a band seven maybe or higher, you can use the present tense to describe a film. Um, and that use of the present tense brings the story of the film into the conversation, makes it very vivid, right? So in Spider-Man, a young boy is bitten by a spider. He gets the special powers of a spider. He climbs building and he saves the world. You can use the present tense, absolutely, right? Um, but also you could say, well, in Spider-Man, he was bitten, right, by a spider. He got these special powers. He was able, he was able to climb buildings and he saved the world. It's fine. You can use both. Um, there's a slight difference in feeling, but, you know, go for both. Nice. Good question, Lily. Thank you. <laughs> anti-hero is another one. Yeah, anti-hero. We can also talk about the anti-hero. It's kind of the the when the protagonist is not really the the good person, if you like, um, almost the negative person. Okay, good. Good. I'm just checking. Let's move on. We've got we so we've talked about the different characters, the soundtrack. If we want to talk about the soundtrack, and very often this is something you may want to mention, some useful adjectives, right? The soundtrack is engaging um, or enchanting. Enchanting is like, it's just beautiful. It casts a spell. It makes you, it like captures you, right? Impressive, upbeat, bum, 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 very lively, upbeat, lively. Engaging, you could also say catchy. The soundtrack is really catchy. Um, the soundtrack of Peaky Blinders is very, very catchy. It's quite dark, but it's quite catchy. It's quite upbeat at times. So different words we can use to describe the soundtrack, right? Which can be useful as well. Any others? The plot. Let's talk about the plot. Now, the plot is the storyline. Of course, this is a noun, just to be clear. It's what happens in the story. You can describe the plot well. Fast paced, fast paced. Fast paced just means it's quick. There's a lot of action. One car chase after another. They're chasing in the car, then they're chasing in the aeroplane, then they're shooting. So your action films may be fast paced. Intricate um, means with lots of detail or quite complex. You may want to say overcomplicated. Sometimes some thrillers are overcomplicated, um, especially I find sometimes the spy thrillers when there's a complex tale of different spies um, knowing different people and working for different people. And then in the end, you're confused, like, well, who's who and which side are they on? And sometimes the plot is just overcomplicated. Over means too much. Over weight, too heavy, too big. Overcomplicated, um, too complicated. So you could say that if it's a good thing, right, the plot is intricate and complex, that's positive. But overcomplicated just means it's negative, right? It's too much. So maybe I should put that on another line just to make it clear. The overcomplicated is too much. And that's a kind of a negative idea. Intriguing. I mean, we talked about this earlier on, right? Intriguing means interesting. Um, makes you curious, basically. Full of suspense, right? Um, yeah, 
it keeps you on your toes. <laughs> keeps you on your toes. Keeps you in suspense, waiting on tenterhooks, just waiting to know what happens. So with many crime stories or thrillers, especially psychological thrillers full of suspense, they keep you on your toes. Or it's, let's say it's, if you're talking about a film, it keeps you on your toes, <laughs> keeps you waiting. Um, we also have this expression, um, it has a plot with twists and turns. So this is a bit like complicated. I'm going to put this up here. Because we talked about um, intricate, complex with twists and turns. So it twists and turns. So twist like this and turning like that. So when the plot has lots of twists and turns. Now you may notice if you saw, if you're in the Facebook group, I don't know if you've joined the Facebook group, but listen, if you haven't, come and join us. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff in the Facebook group. In there, I posted some videos um, and I posted a, a very short video about describing a book, right? And talking about the book and one of the expressions was it, it has a plot with twists and turns. And when I was preparing this lesson, of course, I realized lots of the language to talk about books you can use to talk about films. Two birds with one stone. Poor bird. Um, which is great. So because many films are an adaptation of a book or they're based on a book, the language is the same, right? Um, it's a fast-paced plot. There's a plot with twists and turns. It's an intricate plot. It's intriguing, full of suspense. It keeps you on your toes. All of that could be a book or a film. So that makes our life a bit easier, right? Where are we? Let's take this off. I've lost it. It's here. Two birds with one stone. <laughs> so... Um, the other one, twists and turns, it has a twist at the end. And that just means an unexpected ending. So if a plot has a twist, you think it's going like straight and then suddenly, boom, it changes and there's a surprise. It has a twist at the end, right? Um, so those are nice expressions, right? Nice things you can say to talk about this. Great. We've got, what else have we got? I'm just seeing any other examples. Fatma says, I'm a big fan of the contains which have a complex and full of suspense plot. Ah, Okay, I'm with you. Contains you mean as a as a as a verb, right? I so I think what you you need to say here is I'm a big fan of the contains which have of the films. Yeah. I wouldn't say contains. Um I would just say I'm a big fan of the films which have a complex and full of suspense plot. Yeah, let's say that. I'm a big fan of the films, de -de 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 -de, which have a complex and full of suspense plot. A full of suspense plot, full of suspense, because it's quite a long adverb or adjective, normally would go after plot, a plot full of suspense. I'm a big fan of the films, which have complex plots, or plots full of suspense, I would say, in my humble opinion. But Fatma, that's lovely. Thank you for sharing. Really good. Irene also says it has a twist at the end and the main character died. The main character died. Yes. Without the was, die as a verb, right? 
Fatty says, can we say life is like a plot full of twists and turns? Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's true. <laughs> I think it is true. Very, very nice. And a couple of other sentences we may want to say about the plot. Um, it has amazing stunts. So stunts, this is for action films. The stunt is where there's an accident, but it looks like it's real. You know, so when you see, for example, I don't know, you see Spider-Man falling from the building and then hitting the ground. Um, it's not real, right? It's a stunt. So it's a fake accident or a fake um, some kind of accident normally. Um, so you see, you know, you see Tom Cruise on his motorbike. Very often it's a stunt man who is dry riding the motorbike, not Tom Cruise. Although that said, I know Tom Cruise does a lot of his own stunts, but for many actors, they have a stunt man or a stunt woman who does the difficult or dangerous shots for them, right? So you can say it has amazing stunts. I love the frantic car chases. Oh, they drive me mad. I don't think there's an American film that doesn't have a frantic car chase. <laughs> there are a lot, right? For sure, to be sure. Okay, so listen, quite a lot of vocabulary in there. Okay, great, good. So let's have a look. Let's move on. Um, oh, the last things I forgot, because we if you want to talk about the film generally, um, you may want to say an award-winning film, Example, Parasite from Korea. I watched that the other day. Oh, what an amazing film. Absolutely great. Uh, a blockbuster, which just means, you know, very successful. It was a blockbuster or a box office hit, which is also successful, but made a lot of money. So a film may be uh, successful without making money. But if you're emphasizing the money, it's a box office hit. The box office is where you buy the ticket, right? And finally, we've got a sequel. Um, we can talk about a sequel to the movie. I don't know if you've seen A Quiet Place. They've now got A Quiet Place Part 2. It's the sequel. It's a follow-up movie. Great. Okay, good. So stunts, we you asked me what stunts me. Yes, a stunt is a, it's a fake accident, basically, or a fake dangerous situation um, where, for example, you pretend to shoot somebody, but you don't really shoot them. It's a stunt. And we have stunt men and stunt women who do the dangerous acting, right? Mohammed said it was a commercially a super flop, but it had a moving story. Yes, that's a good expression. It was a flop, right? Mohammed, thank you so much for that. It was a flop, which means unsuccessful. Again, either financially or in other terms, you can say it was a flop. So it was a success. Or if not, it was a flop. Okay, can I say scenario instead of plot? Kind of. So scenario is a specific scene. So there's a scenario. You describe one scene in the film. The plot is the whole story in the whole film from the beginning to the end. But the scenario is kind of, it's one scene. For example, the setting at the beginning of the film, the scenario is Spider-Man is in a museum um, looking at different spiders. That's the scenario. So it's one scene. The plot is the whole story, right? Great. Uh, can we use flop as a verb? Yes, the movie flopped. Yes. Yeah, 
exactly let me add that in as well the movie flopped it's nice as well that's really nice language the movie flopped great counter road thank you very very much lovely so let's move on i'm gonna share this with you i mean i had a look at this website it's by the nashville film industry or the nashville film institute um, it's a film institute in america and i was just looking at their website and it was amazing again this is a website aimed at filmmakers and serious people in in the film world and students who are studying film but as a language resource wow wonderful so moderators Mehdi Apsara and Paula if you could share this link in the chat box um, I'll just show you briefly what's in here <laughs> there's a sign up form pop-up form um, movie genres right so it just goes through the different things it talks about I can just show you here and you'll see same thing as I said right the setting different kinds of setting characters it talks about different characters so in a comedy you may have a nerd which is a or a, uh, like Mr Bean a jock token minorities in a crime series maybe you've got detectives gangsters criminals right it talks about the subject matter and lots of vocabulary you can use here filming techniques if you wanted to talk about the camera angle or the lighting you could ways of talking about music and the soundtrack again some really really nice language in here um, and then it goes on to talk about action it talks about the audience types of action movies so there's lots of examples if you're looking for some films to talk about there you go superman superhero movies um or martial arts film enter the dragon bruce lee great or if you prefer the more comic jackie chan rumble in the bronx so lots of films to look at but also look at all the, the language here to describe different films genre of comedy it goes in detail tells you about different kinds of comedies slapstick romantic again and if you're looking for examples or ideas for your film binging at the weekend this is the place to go it goes on and on i mean this is absolutely a mind gold crime ba -ba. i'm not going to go through it all but you can actually go through um some amazing vocabulary in context ideas to talk about oh man it's great go and check it out i strongly recommend it great hmm Misa says greetings from Greece greetings from Spain thank you so much lucky to have found you well lucky to have found you Misa as well thank you for coming great Froggart says I like comedy movies good is this a list for improving vocabulary it could be it could be I mean it's not a language learning site right the website is for students of film but to pick up some new words i think it's really interesting practice your reading it's interesting i wouldn't go and learn a whole list of words but just pick out one or two that you think can be useful for you yes nice my mind's sort of never ending yeah it is never ending vocabulary um so don't be overwhelmed don't learn everything just pick out one or two topics that might be good uh the link to the website well it was in the it's the it's in the notes but i think the moderators have shared it it's basically nfi edu movie genres great good so i'm gonna what am i gonna do i'm gonna move on what's next i can't remember <laughs> I'll have to go and check. Let's see what's there. We looked at vocabulary, right? What comes after vocabulary? 
Oh, the new online course. Oh, yes, of course. I was, yes, of course. Da 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 da. Bum. Comedy. The new online course, I'm going to take 10 minutes or so just to tell you a little bit about this course. I've launched it today. Um, this, some of you who've been with me for several months or years, you may remember in November and December, I did a course called IELTS Interact. Okay, this is the same course. I've just changed a little bit, but it's the same course. So, by the way, if you bought IELTS Interact, don't buy this. It's the same. But this is a little bit different from the Get a Band 7 course, right? So you're probably familiar with this course, right? The Get a Band 7. And this has got lots of stuff. It's got tips and strategies. It's got model answers. It's got idioms, vocabulary, lots of topics for you to study, right? Now, I've taken that course and made it bigger, right? So if it's like upgrading, I've taken the same, trying to I mean, take the same course, upgraded it to make it even bigger and better. And I've taken the ideas from the Interact course to put into this one, the Gold course. So let me explain exactly in a bit of detail um, about the course. What I'll do is I'll tell you who it's for, uh, tell you about the method and what you get in the course and how much it is, right? So bear with me. I'll just take 10 minutes so that you, you know this, okay? So we've got um, the course is IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7. Who's it for? So basically, if you're kind of intermediate level, band 5 or 6 or 6.5, possibly band 7, actually, I'm going to add band 7 because even if you're a band 7, I've had students going from 7 to 8 on this as well. So even a band 7, you could be in there. If you want to take the IELTS test um, in the coming months, perfect. And if you're serious about studying, right, you take your studying seriously. This course, okay, is not a quick, a quick fix. It's not, oh, I'll pick out a few things in two days or one week and I'm ready. No, it's not a quick fix. It's a course that really focuses you on getting the language you need to move up one level in English, in IELTS, right? So it's quite a lot of work. And the feedback from the IELTS Interact students was that there was almost too much stuff um, and it was too quick because we did it week by week. So that's why what I've done with this course is it's not week by week. You get the course and you study at your own pace, step by step. But there is a group that you can join so you can still have support from me and other students, okay? Um, so if you're serious about studying, this is a really good course for you. Um, now, what's in the course? You get the same as the Get a Band 7 course. You get the same content, strategy masterclasses to show you how to succeed, different tips for part one, two, and three. And you get the skills classes, the model answers, the idioms, pronunciation, and grammar. So it's the same as get a band seven plus. But you also get now two private live lessons, right, in the gold course. So two live lessons. That's on the second and third Thursday each month. Similar to these live lessons, right? So in the same way I do the live lessons here for an hour and a half, you'll get the same, but two of them very focused on the IELTS topics that are recent and that we need to focus on for you to succeed. Um, and there's more. You get also the private group, so we'll have a private group on Facebook just and only for the students of this course so that you're connected. You can ask me questions. 
you can um, discuss with each other, motivate each other. There are practice videos. So I've taken the speaking success system. It's a system of practicing English. And there are lots of extra videos, PDFs and MP3s to practice with. There are quizzes so you can review and enjoy the course. Um, and you've got lifetime access, right? So you pay once, but you get access for life. So you basically get the live lessons two a month, every month again and again and again, new live lessons. So it's a bit like a membership, but you only pay once. Ha ha. Interesting. There are a couple of bonuses. You get my, well, you get future updates to the course. So whenever it's updated, you get that automatically. And there's an ebook of my 20 favorite idioms, right? So that's in there as well. So altogether, this is what you get for the whole course. Hmm. Okay. Lots of stuff in there, right? This is the gold course. Now then, there, you may have a few questions about it. I'm going to answer some of the questions. If you're interested and you want to find out more about this, um, then the price. Basically, the IELTS Interact course was $150. So it was the same course, right? I've decided to reduce it. I reduced it to 100 and then I thought, right, for the time being, right now, I'm going to do it for $77, right? So the course today, right now, is at $77. If you're interested, the guys have shared the link. I think Paula in YouTube has shared it. Thank you, Paula. There's a link there that has been shared with you. And also in Facebook, you can go and find out more. And if you think, yeah, this is what I need, this is what I want. I want this step-by-step -step guide to take me through the course and the language I need, as well as a community so I can contact other people, I can ask Keith questions, and lots, well, two live lessons a, a month extra, then this might be for you. Uh, you can also get information about this directly from the from my website, the um Key Speaking Academy. If you want to go to the website to find out more, just go into the website here. It's keyspeakingacademy.com, right? And you can see it over here. Basically, bum, 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 bum. If you go to the home page and press the study with me button, that will take you straight away and give you information about the course tells you more about it. There's an introduction video. Um, students who are on the Interact course, who, which is the same course, I've just changed the name, um, tell you about it. I tell you about the speaking success system and how that works. And also you can look at the curriculum, the live lessons. You can find out everything here um, and actually have a look all the way through the curriculum if you want to see the materials, what you get in there. And then if you want to buy, you just press get the course. And when you press that, it sends you over to the payment page. Um, so you can find out more about it there. In fact, I'll show you briefly how that works directly. So you see how it does work. Um, bear with me. Let me show you. Very briefly. Here we go. Apple, as usual, put things in the cloud. Nice one, Apple. will be taken to a, a page here um, where you can find out all about the course. It gives you information about the course. You can watch a video about it, what you will learn. you find out more information about what makes it different. And then it just goes through all the materials. You can scroll down and then you will get the curriculum, but you can then pay. Um, down here, you can choose one payment. If you're in a tax country like in Europe, you may have to pay extra tax. Or you can do a two payment. And then you would just click on the 
the button to buy or enroll. This takes you then to a, a payment page. And on here, you can choose either to pay with PayPal, if you have a PayPal account or with a credit card, and you would just enter your details here, for example, um, and then your number, da, 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 expiration date 12th, and then your CVC code. And at the end, you just press the buy button. And when you buy, boom, that takes you straight over to the thank you page. There's an introduction video with me. You can start the course straight away. Um, and it just says to remember to check your email because there you'll get the receipt and more enrollment details. If you ever needed to contact me, then you can press up here, boom, and that takes you straight to the contact page. You can leave a message there if you need any help. Um, or you can just start the course straight away. And when you press here, it takes you straight to the course curriculum. And you can start with the welcome. It also tells you how to use this course, a bit of an introduction, the materials. And then you can see, we can look at the evaluation of IELTS. There are strategy masterclasses. You've then got techniques for part one. And then you go straight in with part one topics using the try, discover, practice and build um, system. And you would walk through here, practicing, watching the video to do the practice exercise. There are things you can download, MP3s and PDFs and so on and so forth. As we move down, you then also get into part two techniques. Um, I tell you about storytelling and how to handle that. There are PDFs as well that you can download here. And you then go into part two and you can see all the questions and topics here. Similarly for part three and then right through at the end, you can get some mock tests for, for extra practice here. And we've even got once you finish, there are some bonus model part one answers that you can also get. So lots and lots of interesting material. So that's it, basically, just to give you an idea <clears throat> okay, of what the course looks like. There are a few questions that came up. Um, somebody says, um, Aslam, what is the duration of the latest course? It's a self-study. So when I ran this course in November and December, it was eight weeks, but the students said it was too short. Eight weeks was too short. They needed more time. So it's a, I, I've made it self-study. I would suggest minimum three months, probably. Um, you, could, you could go in and study it in two months. Students have done that. Um, but you probably need three months, maybe longer. Some students may spend five or six months and come back and review. But it's not like a week. No, I think you need at least, I would say at least two months to study the course to get the benefit of the course. Okay, But it's not fixed. You can study at your own pace. That was the one of the key changes. Um, <laughs> Rainbow. Is this an ad? Well, Rainbow, it's not an ad. It's a promotion. I'm letting you know about the course. <laughs> I'm a lovely, great. Um, is Was the class finished? Sara, no, the class is not finished. I'm going to look at idioms and recommendations and more language in a moment. <laughs> uh, great. What is the day to enroll today? Parham, you can enroll today, follow the clicks, you can go in today, you can start any time. So as soon as you buy the course, you can start, you can join the Facebook group. And then next month, on the Thursday, the second Thursday and the third Thursday, you'll get access to the live lessons. I will give you private access to those lessons. Their live lessons are like here on YouTube and Facebook, um, but they're private. But this format will be the same, right? Very, very similar. <clears throat> wow, Leila, that's very kind. I'm so grateful you are a successful, intelligent teacher. Very, very kind. Thank you very much. Um, okay, great. Cass says the course is so worth it. There's a lot of things in there. Um, Cass enrolled last December. So Cass was in the Interact course. It was called Interact 
um, but I changed the name. Um, I wanted to make it clear to everybody that a lot of the content from this course is also in this course, but the gold has much more, right? That's why it's more expensive. This course is $27. This course is $77. You get so much more in this course. But yeah, Cass, thank you for that. Great. Um, so Cass joined in September. Now, here's uh, some other questions that students were asking me on the internet through email. Somebody said, I bought the complete IELTS interactive course. Is this different? So no, it's the same course. So don't buy again. If you bought the interactive, this is the same. Okay. However, I have sent you access to the Facebook group and live lessons. So you continue to study with me. So this is like, especially for the interact students. If you don't know interact, forget it. It's not you. But if you remember Interact, you students will get the, the access. The other question was, um, I bought the course of Speaking Success Band 7 Plus, right? This one. Um, can I upgrade to the new gold course? Great question, right? Can I pay a bit more and get the gold course? Yes, is the answer. So you don't need to buy the whole course because you've already paid for the basic band seven. However, you can't upgrade directly on the website at the moment, right? So if you already bought the IELTS Speaking Success Getter Band 7, just send me an email, right? Let us know you want to buy the gold version and I will give you a coupon. I'll give you a coupon for $27, which is what you paid for the band seven course. And then you can just pay with the coupon. You pay the extra $50 to upgrade. That I think is the best solution, right? Is upgrade to the gold one um, and just pay the extra difference. And then you get access to the new materials, the practice materials, the speaking success system, two live lessons a month, every month, like a membership, but you pay once. And also you get the um, the Facebook group, lifetime access. Okay, great. There are a few questions. Mansour, Kahoot is coming. Wait a moment, it's coming. Cass says, enroll now, guys. Cass, thank you very much for also supporting. Layla bought the interactive course. So Layla, you look in your e -box, inbox. I've sent you an email to give you information about this. Okay. So Layla, yes, as you bought the interactive, you can join the live stream. I will give you access for the weeks two and three. The answer is yes. Yes. So Duke, what if I had the band, get a band seven plus course? That's great. That still exists. Of course, you still have that, but if you want to upgrade, you can upgrade. Um, just send me an email, as I said, saying that you want to upgrade and I'll give you a coupon and then you can access the new course. Um, and you keep both, but the, the basic course is included in the upgraded version. Nice. Anna, the course expire? No, it never expires. You just carry on. So it's it's not eight weeks. It's not three months. If you want to come back in a year and carry on studying the material, you can. There is no expiration. Torujo, thank you so much. That's very kind. I love the class. What about $27 course? Yes, that still exists, right? So you can still find that. Um, as I mentioned on the website, so if you want the $27 course, go to my website and get this one. If you want to upgrade, send me an email. I'll give you a coupon and you pay an extra 50 to get this course. If you don't have this one, you can just buy this, $77 still going for a song, right? 
it's come right down from 150 to 77 dollars excellent and other questions Uh, I wonder if the course is suitable for TOEFL. Denise, yes, in, in one respect. Yes, it will improve your English speaking for TOEFL. But there are no TOEFL exam tips. So it doesn't tell you the technique of TOEFL. But improving your English level to go up one level, yes, it will definitely help you, Denise, yes. Oh, we've asked Layla. We've said that one with you. Yep. Okay, quickly, any other questions before I move on? Arslan, is this course only for speaking? Yes, it's only for speaking. Yes, exactly. Warinda, can I get a coupon for Udemy? So if you bought the course on Udemy, again, send me an email. I will give you a coupon. You can get the discount. Yes. Right. And OK, is it not fake? Of course, it's not fake. <laughs> Mr. Kit, thank you for your work. OK, guys, I'm going to move on um, to the next part of the lesson. I just wanted to share that with you um, so you know about the course. And if you're interested, click on the link or go to the website, Keith Speaking Academy, and you can find out. Just click on that link, study with me on the home page, remember, and you can find out all about the course okay i'll just do it one more time just to make sure you know where to go key speaking academy if you go there on the home page there is that study with me and just click on that you can find out all the details to make sure it's right for you any questions just send me an email yeah if you're not sure send me an email to team at keithspeakingacademy.com myself and my team with Burns, we will answer your questions. Great. Now, I'm going to carry on with our lesson. OK. Let's take these off and let's come in. We're going to look at recommendations. Um, because when you recommend a film or when you recommend something, how do you do that in English? Right. Ways of recommending. Clearly, one of the most simple ones is you should. Notice it's followed by the verb, but not the infinitive. There is no to, right? You should to? No. You should watch this. Or if I were you, I would. If I were you, I would, right? Now, this is interesting. Notice the intonation, right? Because what we don't do in English, you don't go, if I were you, I would watch this. Mm, not really. Take the first phrase. If I were you, up you, I would watch this. If I were you, I would watch this. OK, so when you have that conditional phrase, normally the intonation goes up. If I were you, da 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 da, dee 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 dee, dee 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 dee. Let's have a look again. If I were you, I would watch this. If I were you, I would watch Spider-Man, for example, right? Let's put an example. It will make it a bit clearer. Spider-Man. You can tell I'm a fan, right? <laughs> I do like Spider-Man. Pure escapism. <laughs> of course, you can say recommend. I recommend you do something. I recommend you watch this. It is possible to say that, but you can drop that if you want. OK, and these are both the same. I recommend you watch Spider-Man. I suggest you watch Spider-Man. It's the only film I'm recommending today. <laughs> now, this is really good. Princess, thank you so much for this, because this is 
a mistake so many people make. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share it because this is really useful for everybody. I definitely recommend you will watch this film. So the definitely is great, right? I definitely recommend you, there's no will. You cannot use will. Even though your recommendation is the future, right? There is no will. So this is really good. I'm really happy you did this, um, Princess, because it shows everybody such a common mistake. It's, I definitely recommend you watch this film. That's beautiful. Great. Thank you, Princess Shell. That's really nice. Now, Azilbeck says, <laughs> I love your example. If I were you, I would watch Keith's videos. Hey. <laughs> Free ads for Spider-Man. Yes, I know. I should be on commission. <laughs> Now, this one, Sandeep, I'm going to share this because it's another mistake. <laughs> but Sandeep, thank you again very much. I prefer you watch. Um, now, really, as a recommendation, it doesn't work, right? If you are... Hmm, if you're speaking to your wife or your husband or somebody very close and you're trying to control them <laughs> some spouses do control their partner then you could say i prefer you watch this but what you're saying is you must <laughs> watch this right it sounds like a suggestion but it's not it, it's an order listen i prefer you cook chicken tonight that means you must cook chicken. So as a recommendation, Sandy, I wouldn't use prefer, right? But if you want to control your partner, go ahead. <laughs> I prefer you do this. Nice. Thank you for sharing so much. So rec I recommend you watch. Recommend can also be used with the gerund and so can suggest. So you can say recommend watching. I suggest watching. Spider-Man, let's change it. Superman. <laughs> or some other Marvel hero. Yeah. So notice you can say watching. I recommend watching. I suggest watching. The only difference is here you're emphasizing you. Here it's a recommendation for everybody. Not just for you, but I recommend watching Superman for everybody. That's the difference. Great. Good question. Can we say, I suggest you watching this? No, 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 no. Either I suggest you watch, right? Or I suggest watching. And your avatar is the answer. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So the answer is no, right? You choose one or the other. <laughs> okay, any others? I recommend you watch this movie, Two Trang, just practicing. Great, lovely, that's it. Now, do notice, and here's a very, very common mistake. Some people say, right, you'd better watch this. You'd better watch Superman. Now, similar to Sandeep controlling his spouse. <laughs> sorry, Sandeep. Um, you'd better is like an order. It's you must because it's basically it's a threat, right? This is a threat. So if you don't do it, something bad will happen. You'd better watch Superman because if you don't, then I'm going to leave you, <laughs> right? So you'd better is something 
um, that a parent uses with children and a boss uses with employees. You'd better finish that report quickly. You'd better come to the meeting, right? It's an order. Um, or a parent, you'd better tidy your room. Actually, not too bad, my daughter's room. You'd better eat your vegetables. It's a threat. It's an order. Okay, so it's not a recommendation. Be careful because it's a common mistake a lot of students make. Yes. Okay. Um. I'm trying to see any others coming in. There's too many. Can we use that before saying watch? Before saying the, before saying you, Santi, can we use that before saying? So, no, before saying you. I recommend that you watch it. There you go. Very quick answer. So the quick answer is no, it's before you. I recommend that you watch it. You don't have to, but you can say that as well. Mahisha, this is lovely. It's worth watching. That's nice. It's worth watching. I'm going to add something. I'm going to make that just a little bit more natural. It's worth watching is really good. In Britain, we often say it's well worth watching. It's well worth watching. And that is even more natural, right? It's well worth watching. Really nice. So all of these are really, really good ways of giving recommendations. Quite simple, but simple is good, right? Okay, I'm going to move on in our last five or ten minutes together um, to talk about idioms, about movies. I only came up with three expressions. Maybe you guys can help me. I was racking my brains, <laughs> thinking hard. Um, and I came up with a film buff. So a film buff, right, or a movie buff is a fan of films. Why is that bigger? So, for example, um, I'm a real film buff. The other one is I like to see films on the big screen. That's kind of idiomatic, but actually the more I think about it, it's not idiomatic because it's literal. It's the big screen. The big screen is the cinema, right? But it's a common expression. Pe you know, People ask, do you prefer to watch films on your iPad or on the big screen or at the cinema? Well, I prefer to watch films on the big screen at the cinema. Because on the big screen, it has a bigger impact and it's more vivid and lively. The last one, the edge of the seat. Ah, the edge of the seat. Yes. Do you remember this one? I was asking you very early on about this. The edge of the seat. <laughs> uh, this one. Let me show you just to remind you the edge of the seat. We've talked about recommending a film. But this was the one, the idiom, on the edge of your seat. I was on the edge of my seat. It means I was in suspense, excited to know what's coming next. Um, I was on the edge of my seat watching this film. So to be, to be on the edge of your seat, to be excited and engaged. I guess that's close enough to the meaning, more or less, to be on the edge of your seat. Film buff. I was on the edge of my seat watching this film. So especially for suspense films and thrillers, you may say I was on the edge of my seat. 
Mary Jane says, I was on the edge of my seat while watching Peaky Blinders. Yes, me too. The last series, right, has come out. <laughs> Aslan. I've got to share because it's so funny. I recommend watching, good language, Keith Man, the final chapter, lead hero. IMDb rating 9 out of 10. Baha, can we use on the edge of my seat while watching a football game? Because there's no seat, right? If you're standing. Um, yes, yes, you can. Although, mind you, a lot of football stadiums, you do have seats. But yes, you can. I was on the edge of my seat while watching a football game. I think even when you're standing, yes, it's idiomatic. So, yes. Cliffhanger. This is a good one, actually. Yes. Let's put that in. A cliffhanger. Because it's not literally hanging off a cliff. Um, it's an ending with suspense, right? The movie... had a cliffhanger so i am waiting for the sequel the movie had a great cliffhanger excuse me <laughs> excellent let's move that up the movie had a great cliffhanger that's the ending in suspense you don't know what's going to happen so i'm waiting for the sequel Quiet Place 2 had a cliffhanger. So now everyone's waiting for a Quiet Place 3. <laughs> Good. Good example. She was last seen on the big screen in the comedy Jawbreaker. Great. I'm a real film buff. Good. Nice. Nail-biting thriller. That's also nice. Yes, it was a nail-biting thriller. Because, again, it's not literally nail-biting, but that's nice. I'm going to put that one in as our last nail-biting thriller. Very exciting. Can you think of a nail-biting thriller? Um... In the line of duty. I'm a diehard fan. <laughs> In the line of duty was the film. It was a thriller. It was a, it was a series. Great. Ted Jaswini. Ted Jaswini, thank you so much for that. That's great. Nail biting thriller. So, nail biting is your idiomatic expression. Lovely. Mohassan, I recommend you teach French. Thank you very much for that, for your recommendation. So listen, guys, those are our idioms. I'm going to stop with our idioms here, right? We've been through a lot. Film buff, on the big screen, on the edge of your seat, cliffhanger, nail biting. Absolutely top notch. All of you are top notch. Very, very enjoyable. Good. So what we've done today, wow, we've done a lot, right? We've been looking at movies and films. We've been looking at film genre or film types. Um, we've also looked at lots of vocabulary to describe setting, character, plot, soundtrack, and so on. I've told you about the new online course, the gold if you have any questions, then do just drop me an email, um, team at Key Speaking Academy, and I'll, I'll tell you more. Follow the link and you can find out all about the course. We've been doing a recommend <laughs> recommending a film, how to make recommendations. And of course, we've just looked at some nice idioms. How about we finish up with a game of Kahoot? And Kahoot is a fun way to finish the class because it's a chance for us to review the language that we've learned so far. I say we, <laughs> you. <laughs> OK, let's have a look together. Um, I'm going to go in to Kahoot and just set it up. If you're new here, then Kahoot is a game we can play together. It's an interactive game where I'm going to ask you four questions. You have to choose 
the correct answer as fast as you can and we'll see who the winner is. So what you need to do is go here, go to kahoot.it and I'm going to set up the game. Stay with me, keep watching me here, but when you go to Kahoot, you'll see you need to put your name and the pin and then we can start playing the game. It just takes five or ten minutes and then we'll finish up the lesson for today. Um, but it's a really nice way for you to get a bit of practice, have a bit of fun um, and carry on. Time for Kahoot, as Froggart says. Rosa, thank you so much. That is very, very kind. Get ready to join. I'm going to send out the um, the link to you. Lob, you deserve to be seen on the red carpet for my acting skills, maybe. <laughs> OK, let me take you over to uh, Kahoot. Um, so here is the pin, right? If you go to kahoot.it, the pin is 4731. 76 moderators if you could put that pin into the chat as well <clears throat> that would be great um and then people you just need to put in your name there you go and put in your pin number 4731976 and shortly we will start the game four questions to see if you've been staying awake in today's lesson have you been staying awake? Hey, I certainly hope so. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to come in. Right, nearly there, bit of music. Okay, if you can't get in, don't worry, you can still put your answer in the chat box, that's absolutely fine. But I think we're going to start. Here we go. Let me take off Kahoot. All right, guys, let's begin. Movies, question number one. I am partial blank thrillers. Four, in, on, two. What's the correct preposition? You've got 30 seconds to choose the right answer. I'm partial mm, thrillers. Do you remember? It means I like I'm fond of. Time up. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, that's a first. <laughs> the answer is I'm partial to thrillers, meaning I like thrillers or I'm fond of thrillers. Unfortunately, a lot of you went for four and in. Oh, dear. That was at the beginning of the class. Maybe some of you weren't there, but that's no excuse. I'm partial to thrillers. Remember that. Make a sentence that is true for you and then you can fix this in your head. I'm partial to blah, blah, blah. OK. So scoreboard, we've got Teju got the right answer, Atwa and Stacy, you were the top three. So correct answer and the fastest. Let's go on to question number two. I can't, I can't quite remember. It's on the blank of my tongue. Edge, end, tip, remains. I can't quite remember. It's on the mm of my tongue. Can you remember? This expression.
Whee, that's reassuring. Thank goodness. We've got a lot of uh, good comments there. It's on the tip of my tongue. Vast majority got that. Edge, we've used in a different idiom. But yeah, tip, right? It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't quite remember. Quite, quite. <laughs> Let's check the leaderboard. Teju is still up there. Stacy is in third, but Ashlyn has stolen into second place. Question number three. It's a great plot with twists and changes, turns, endings, lemon. <laughs> uh, twists and lemon. Love it. Well done, Camilla, Mary Jane. Well done. See your answers. Lakshmi, nice. Well done. Devine, well done. Johnny Beck, be careful. The answer was turns. It's a great plot with twists and turns, right? Different changes in the plot. Surprising changes. Excellent. 68 people got it right. That makes me happy again. Well done. So, Teju, you're still there. Stacy has stolen into second place, knocking Ashlyn off the podium. Well, off the second place. Great. Ying is the highest climber, up 12 places. We're moving on to the last question. It was so exciting. I was on the edge of my blank all the way through. Seat, chair, sofa. Table. <laughs> Lob, well done. Froggart as well, nice one. Mohammed, good. Monica, well done. Dana and Sushnozer, excellent. I think, oh, excellent. Look at that. 70 people got seat on the edge of my seat. Absolutely brilliant. That makes me very happy. We've got that expression sorted, nailed. Well done. <laughs> there we go. Let's have a look at the podium. Third place, Ashlyn. Ooh. Second place, Stacy, which means I'm guessing... Teju has stolen the first place, the golden prize. Well done, Teju. <laughs> Hooray. Oh, where am I? Come back over here. <laughs> I shrank. That's it. Kahoot. Well done, Teju. Well done to all of you for learning and practicing. I hope that was useful for you and I hope you had a bit of fun today. Congratulations to the winners. You took the words right out of my mouth. Listen, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was good. It was fun. We've talked about movies, films, how to discuss them, how to describe them and even how to recommend them to other people. Um, so great, Mr. Kit, you are welcome. Thank you very, very much to you. Great. Other questions coming in? Arslan says, Keith's YouTube Live is just premium. Loads of things to learn. I hope so. I hope so. Lily, you're welcome very much. Thank you for joining us today. Mossen is addicted, I hope, in the good sense to the live lessons. Yeah, the game is full of suspense. It's interesting, right? It's a nice game. Very informative lesson, says Ibrahim. You're welcome, Rohit, as well. Thanks a lot. So listen, thank you all for joining me. Do remember, as if you would forget, if you're on YouTube, do remember to subscribe, turn on the notifications to find out about videos. On Saturday, I'm releasing a video on YouTube, recorded it's going to explain the speaking success system, right? The speaking success system over here is the system that I use in the new course. Um, and it's a, it's a system I've developed over 10 years of teaching 
on getting you to practice and practice language for IELTS. There's a video all about that on Saturday on YouTube. So keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes open. Um, just to remind you, you can still get my teaching success, IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7 course, $27. It's still there. If you want to upgrade or you want to go to the gold, you can buy the gold course. Right now, it's at $77, but I don't know how long for, but you can get that. If you already have this, send me an email and I'll give you a coupon to get a discount on this. If you don't have this, just go and buy this. <laughs> if it's right for you, if it's what you need, okay? You can get all the details on the website, the Keith Speaking Academy. Everything is there. You can find out all about it. If you have any questions, just email us at team, whoops, Keith, team at Keith Speaking Academy. Boom, that's it. Next live lesson, first Thursday of the month. That's going to be next April the 7th, I think it is. April the 7th, right? So do remember, live lessons on YouTube and Facebook, the free live lessons once a month, the first Thursday of each month. Excellent. Let me take all of these off. Mirka, oh, you've been... Let's take that off. I took that off. Thank you so much for your very much, Keith. Looking forward for your Spanish lesson. I don't know when it will be, but coming up soon. Keep watching. Great. Great lesson. Rob, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, take care, everybody. And I cannot wait to see you soon. This live lesson stays here. It's recorded. So you can come back and watch it on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, that's it. I'm here. Go and watch a movie in English. Chill out, but practice as well. OK, take care, my friend. All the best. Watch a movie. See you soon.